Hey rugby fans, it's Leanne, a volunteer with Historic Rugby, back again for another edition of Reading and Rugby for Kids. We're still back in the library, the Thomas Hughes Public Library that opened in 1882, but we've got a different story for you all today, and this one is actually one of my personal favorites. It's a very, very cute book. I'm gonna tell you I'm going to be talking how the people in the book would have talked, so I might sound a little bit different from the other times that I've read to you all. But today, we are going to read Bubba, the Cowboy Prince, A Fractured Texas Tale. This one was written by Helen Kettleman, illustrated by James Warhalla. Once, a strapping young fella named Bubba lived on a ranch with his wicked stepdaddy and his hateful and lazy stepbrothers, Dwayne and Milton. Bubba's stepdaddy spoiled Dwayne and Milton. No end. But Bubba worked from sun up to sundown, doing the chores of three ranch hands. Bubba never complained, though. He loved ranching. Dwayne and Milton spent their days sitting horseback, bossing Bubba around. Get them doggies along there, Bubba, ordered Dwayne. Yeah, and watch out for them cow patties, said Milton. You know Daddy hates for you to track up the house. Now, Ms. Lurleen, who lived down the road a piece, was the purtiest and the richest gal in the county. She owned the biggest spread west of the Brazos, and she loved ranching too. But it was lonesome work, and after a while, she decided it was time for some companionship. I aim to find myself a feller, she said, one who loves ranching as much as I do, and it wouldn't hurt if he was cute as a cow's ear either. Ms. Lurleen decided to throw a ball. She sent invitations to all the ranchers in Texas. Soon, the day of the ball arrived. Milton and Dwayne spent all day getting gussied up in their finest duds. Bubba about ran himself ragged waiting on them. Bubba, shouted Dwayne, fetch my bolo tie. Bubba, shouted Milton, get my boots polished. Bubba, shouted their wicked stepdaddy, Brush them horses and wash that wagon. By the time Dwayne and Milton and their wicked daddy were ready to go, Bubba was exhausted. Still, as they climbed into the wagon, Bubba asked, Can't you wait for me to get ready? I want to go dance with Miss Lurleen, too. Dwayne and Milton and their wicked daddy hooted and hollered. Why, you're sorrier than a steer in a stockyard, said Dwayne. Can you imagine Miss Lurleen dancing with the likes of you, said Milton. Miss Lurleen wouldn't wipe the dirt clots off her boots with that raggedy shirt of yours. And you smell more like the cattle than the cattle do. Bubba took himself, took a look at himself. It was true. 
He didn't have a decent shirt to wear. His boots were downright disgraceful. And he did smell a bit rough. Milton and Dwayne were right. Miss Arlene wouldn't dance with the likes of him. Bubba hung his head. He felt lower than a rattlesnake in a gully. Milton and Dwayne and their wicked daddy went on off to the ball. Bubba mounted his horse and headed for the pasture to check on the herd. The sky was getting darker than a black bull at midnight. It looked like a Texas thunderstorm was brewing. Bubba had just arrived at the cow pasture when a bolt of lightning struck, knocking him off his horse. Bubba was stunned for a moment, but then he picked himself up. He heard a voice. Go to the ball, Bubba, said the voice. Bubba looked around. No one was there except him and the cows. Now, Bubba figured he'd bonked the bejeebers out of his bane because the voice was coming from a cow. She chewed her cud for a moment, then said, I'm your fairy god cow, and I can help you go to the ball. Bubba sat up, rubbing his head. I'd like to go, Miss God Cow, but shoot, I don't have a thing to wear. The fairy god cow swished her tail, and Bubba's raggedy clothes changed into the handsomest cowboy duds he'd ever laid eyes on. His jeans were crisp, his boots were shiny, his shirt was dazzling, and his Stetson was whiter than a new salt lick. Why, I look downright pretty, said Bubba. The fairy god cow swished her tail again. A nearby steer turned into the most beautiful white stallion Bubba had ever seen. Now, you go on off to the ball, Bubba, and have a good time dancing with Miss Larlene. But you best be home by midnight, because that's when the magic runs out. Yahoo! shouted Bubba as he jumped on the white horse and galloped off to the ball. When Bubba arrived, the whole dam was in full swing. But every time Miss Lorlane finished a dance, she yawned. There goes another $10 Stetson on a five-cent head, she complained. Where are all the real cowboys? By the time it was Bubba's turn to dance with Miss Larlene, it was almost midnight. Soon as she saw Bubba, Miss Larlene's eyes lit up. Why, you're cute as a cow's ear, she said. Bubba flushed, then took Miss Larlene in his arms and started dancing. Dwayne and Milton turned purple with jealousy. Who is that dude, said Dwayne. I don't recollect seeing him before, but he looks a mite familiar, said Milton. Do something, said their wicked daddy. That cowboy is winning Ms. Larlene's heart. As it turns out, Milton and Dwayne didn't have to do a thing because Bubba and Miss Larlene were in the middle of do -si doing when the clock struck midnight. Suddenly, Bubba's fine dust turned into the dirty rags he usually wore around the ranch. He looked sorry and smelled worse. 
What is that awful smell, said Milton. Why, it's Bubba, shouted Dwayne. Bubba turned 14 shades of red, apologized to Miss Larlene, and ran out of the room. Wait, she yelled, chasing after him. But Bubba didn't wait. He jumped on his cow and lumbered off into the night. In the ruckus, he lost one of his dirty cowboy boots. Miss Lurleen clasped it in her arms. This is the boot of a real cowboy and the man I want to marry, and I aim to find him. Miss Lurleen went back inside, and though she asked everybody at the ball, nobody knew who the mysterious cowboy was. Nobody except Dwayne and Milton and their wicked daddy, that is. But they weren't talking. The next day, Miss Larlene went from ranch to ranch looking for a cowboy who owned the boot. When she came to Dwayne and Milton's ranch, both brothers tried the boot on, but it didn't fit. Miss Larlene had just climbed on her horse to leave when Bubba rode up. He was dirty and sweaty and smelly from working with the cows, and he was only wearing one boot. Miss Larlene jumped off her horse and ran over to Bubba. Try this on, she cried. Bubba took his dirty old boot and pulled it on. Much obliged, ma'am, he said, blushing. It fit perfectly. You're my prince in cowboy boots, shouted Miss Larlene. I'd recognize that smell anywhere. Marry me, cowboy, and help me work my Dwayne and Milton and their wicked daddy threw chicken fits. But Bubba just smiled and he and Miss Farlane rode off into the sunset. They lived happily ever after, roping and cow poking and getting them doggies along. Bubba, the Cowboy Prince. Now our story about Bubba is a lot like another story that I bet a lot of you know. So I would be very curious for some of you to tell us what story is this one a lot like? And maybe draw us a picture of Bubba with the main character from this other story, which is a lot like the story we just read. So I want you to think about it. Thank you.